And I'm done. Okay, let's just save that, and it should be good to play. No! So, this whole story started back in quarantine, specifically the beginning of quarantine. People were really bored during all of quarantine, so I decided to make a game. It would be fun for me and everybody else. And it would provide a really nice learning experience for me. And, well, let's just say it was fun. However, during my month developing a game, I've learned many things. And used many skills I didn't even know I had. So, the first thing I had to do was choose a game engine. Since I was a beginner, a complete beginner to game development, I chose Unity since there were tons of tutorials and it was free. Also, some of my favorite games came out of Unity, like Cuphead and Hollow Knight. But first, I had to learn how to use Unity. So I began watching a lot of tutorials by Brackies and Blackthorn Prod. These guys were really helpful and helped me a lot, so huge shout out to them and their YouTube channels even though they probably don't need. I learned how to make a simple character controller script, which I later added on new features and moves to. For now, I was just using a box as my character. But I wanted to design something that looked cool. So I got out my drawing tablet and I made an epic character with tons of animations. And since I only had a month, I couldn't spend time into designing background sprites. So I went to the Unity asset store and got a couple of hand-drawn background sprites. And they looked really cool in my game, but some of the backgrounds I drew myself. I also worked on drawing the enemy sprites and the mini-boss of my game. My character controller script, or something that basically controls the character given what inputs you put, was written something like this. Each of the lines meant that each time an input was given, it would be multiplied by the time it was given in, and that's how much I would move in the game. Next, jumping. For jumping, I didn't want the player to double jump or triple jump even. So what I did is that the player could only jump if they were touching the ground. This meant I need to create a new tag for ground, and I need to check if the player was touching the ground. Otherwise the player wouldn't be able to jump, as it would probably be in the air. The next part of the character controller I made was dashes. Dashes are basically movements that solely move you left or right. So I coded this in by adding a vector component. A vector is basically a two-dimensional space or coordinate that represents velocity or a force. If I put in a vector for only one direction, the player would only move in that direction if I pressed that certain key. So I wrote something like this, and I tested it out in-game. The next thing I made was attacks. A good game is nothing without player combat. So that's why I made some sword sprites first. Then I animated the sword sprites frame by frame. I exported all the images into Unity, and I coded an animated component for it. The next thing I wrote was a simple melee combat script. This combat script would allow me to see the sword's radius, and it would detect all the enemies in a circle around the point that was on the hilt of the sword. I would be able to change this radius to make it smaller or larger, and I figured out a nice length for this. Next, inside my update function, I made it so that if I pressed my first mouse button, I would trigger an attack. I also made a small attack timer so you could only attack every half a second. Next, I programmed the enemies. The enemies I would like in my game for the first ones would only be shooting and moving around. So what I did is I used the instantiate function, which basically spawned something in the world at a given period of time. But to use the instantiate function, you need to make something into a prefab, which means it basically exists outside of the scene. 
So I made the instantiate function spawn some rocks. And inside each of the rocks, I put a vector component that made it fly across the screen. Then I made each of the rocks damage the player by adding an enemy tag to it. The next thing I had to do was design levels. I want to make levels pretty interesting and a medium level of difficulty. So I started with adding some of the enemies into a kind of pit-like arena so that the player would have to fight them off one by one. Then I made the player advance to a next to the next stage of the level, where there would be other enemies. Then the player would go to the boss fight. As I only had a month, I didn't want to make a level that I wouldn't be able to finish, so I only added three simple parts. However, in the future, I hope to add more. So this is how the level went. Since I really didn't have that much time, I just made some basic background music and I slapped some sword sounds and walking sounds make, made by my household materials and my mouth. This would help increase the immersion of my game because music helps pretty much everything. Next, I worked on a boss. The boss is like the main objective of the game, and people would strive to defeat the boss. So I wanted to make this boss hard but not too difficult, since it would be my first boss in the game. So I decided on making a dragon. First, I drew the dragon sprites on my iPad, and then I exported them into Unity and made a lot of animations. Next, I coded in the boss fight. For the boss fight, I wanted to make the boss have three stages and three attacks in each stage. The first was a fireball. The boss would shoot a fireball in the player's direction and follow the player wherever he went. Next, I wanted the boss to make a fire rain effect. So it would spawn fireballs above and around the player, and they would drop they would drop down and deal damage to the player. The third and final attack I wanted the dragon to have was a horn attack. The horn attack looked something like this, and it would be in the final stage, as you could jump on top of the horns and eventually kill the dragon. So those are the three attacks I made. However, I needed a way to transition between all three of the attacks, so I coded an animator component. I had all the animations for each attack and for each stage, so I compiled them all together and put them in the animator. But now the game needed to know what to do with these attacks. So I wrote this state machine like a tree. After you finish stage 1 and its attacks, you would go into stage 2. And after that, you would go into stage 3. But each of these stages need to have conditions or parameters. So I set up a few triggers. One for attacking, one for the second attack, and then I set triggers for the different stages. If the dragon's health went past a certain part, it would switch stages from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3. And if it went past 0, it would just die. The next part of this was making the dragon actually follow the player. I didn't want the dragon to follow the player while it was attacking, but I did want it to follow the player when it was just idle, and then attack after it reached the point where the player was. So I coded something like this, where the dragon would try to follow the player's Y coordinate, and once it got to a certain range, it would fire or attack. I coded in most of the attacks with the same syntax and same triggers, just using different randomizers and switching it up a bit. Coding in the fireballs and the horns was actually pretty simple. For the fireballs, I used an instantiate function on the dragon's mouth, so it would just spawn fireballs on the dragon's mouth. Then I made the fireballs just have a certain velocity, 
For the horns, I just made a special collider that stretched all the way from the horns. And whenever the attack played, I enabled the collider so it would detect everything in range of the horns and deal damage. And for the fire fountain slash rain effect, I just spawned fireballs in random locations in different ranges. And that was pretty much my boss done. So that was basically um, all that I had time for this month. So you can download the complete test run of this game. Not, not even an alpha, not even a beta, just test of this game. And you can play it and see if you can beat the boss. But I'm going to add more in the future, so... Yeah, this was a really fun experience. And bye.